We are in Jello Zafirano kitchen and today I will cook a dish from my homeland, Bizzoccheri. Let's start. For the recipe, I will need stone ground soft wheat flour type 0, water, salt, butter, stone ground buckwheat flour, padano cheese. We have a latteria part skim cheese. Caser cheese will also be fine. We have potatoes, garlic, and savoy cabbage. This is in the winter, whereas in the summer we use chard. My grandmother if made them with green beans. And now let's start with the dough. Let's mix the two flowers well. Take a pastry board. We're ready. Let's add the water, when would uh, typically use cold water, but I use it at 50 degrees, as it helps the buckwheat starches blend. Let's continue kneading the dough. This stage is very important to, to make the dough as much elastic as possible. Bearing in mind that buckwheat has no gluten. The dough is ready. Perfect consistency. It must be silky, it must be well blended, must not be too soft, so that we will not need to add too much buckwheat flour while rolling it. Now we roll out the dough and cut it into pizzoccheri. We take a rolling pin, a knife, and buckwheat, because remember only buckwheat is used for rolling out. Let's put it on the pastry board. We have rolled it out to the thickness is perfect. It's 2-3 millimeters so we can start cutting. Go! We'll cut strips of more or less 7 centimeters, which are more or less 4 fingers. Let's put some more flour. Let's pie them. The cut must be half a centimetre or one centimetre. As you have seen on the pastry board, there are some buckwheat dough leftovers. In the old days, they would be used to make tagliadin soup with leeks and potatoes, because nothing goes to waste. Now let's move on to the vegetables. Start with the potatoes. Spill them. And coarse cut them into pieces. Doesn't matter if the pieces are not regular in shape, the important thing is the right cooking time to cook evenly. And now let's take the Savoy cabbage. Look how beautiful this Savoy cabbage is, directly from the vegetable garden. Let's remove the external leaves. We won't bin these, we'll use them to make soup. We have our cabbage. 
The savo cabbage is made of the outer leaves and the heart. So the savo cabbage is cut as if it was a cake, which means we will use the internal and the external parts, two completely different flavors. Let's remove the central core. Let's cut it into chunks. And now let's cut the cheese. It is very important for the cheese to be at room temperature because this will help melt it. We take a bowl. Our cheese. Let's cut off the crust. This is a Valtellinese part skin. The Casera cheese would do too. Obviously the quality of the ingredients determines the quality of the dish. This applies to all recipes. As you can see, I'm slicing it into thin strips. And now let's proceed with cooking. Start by sorting the water. So we have uh, 6 liters of water, and we have 10 grams per liter, but then 60 grams of salt. Salting water is very important, because using strong cheeses, you need to have a balanced seasoning. Let's put the potatoes in first. The potatoes must go for two minutes. After two minutes, we put the cabbage. So it is very important for the vegetables to cook in the water where the pizzoccheri will be cooked, because it is part of a balance of substances that can end up on the serving dish, both nutritious and digestive. And now let's put the pizzoccheri. The pizzoccheri must be put slowly and with the help of the handle of your ladle, you have to stir them to prevent sticking. While the pizzoccheri cook for 5-6 minutes, we start to melt the butter with the garlic. So we take the butter and our garlic, which we cut in half. We leave it unpeeled. And we begin to melt it slowly. Let's get a big stock pot or a low and wide pot. We will then drain our pizzoccheri. It is very important that this is very hot. In fact, it should be kept here on the edge of the pot for the cooking water to keep it hot. It is very important because we are talking about a dish that has melted cheese as its ingredients. Therefore, heat is fundamental for the success of the dish. We lower the water, that is the heat, without turning it off. Let's get the cheese, the padano cheese. And let's begin to drain the pizzoccheri. It is very important to drain them well, because there must be no water in pizzoccheri. So let's make a first layer. Add to the well distributed cheese. Let's take another one. And repeat the same thing several times. What a nice buckwheat scent. But the last layer is missing. I did something my granny would do. This is, uh, she would take the pan and put it on the cooking pot to keep the heat. So I'm going to put to the last layer of cheese.
I garnish with Padano cheese. And cover everything with a cloth. Meanwhile, the warmth of the water, the warmth of the bizzoccheri, or the cabbage of the potatoes helps the cheese melt. I raise the temperature of the butter. The butter must sizzle. It must reach a temperature of 110 degrees. It must become hazelnut brown. There are various schools of thought. I believe that brown butter adds flavor to the dish. Past a given temperature, I think it is harmful to digestibility. So I prefer to keep it a little behind. And here is the brown butter. At the right temperature. Let's go and check our pizzoccheri. The cheese has already melted thanks to the heat of the pot. Let's pour the butter. Let's remove the garlic. And let's stir our pizzoccheri. Without mixing them too much, otherwise the cheese will disappear. How delicious! My dear friends, these are pizzoccheri of Valtellina. But let's remember to call them by their name. I pizzocchi. Ciao!